All right, welcome to Combat Boots to Red Bottoms presentation tonight. This is May, I believe, the 25th, and we are joined here with none other than Miss Deborah Marshall, which is a very, very, very honor for me to have her here. Um, I'm going to do a brief introdu introduction of her. Um, you're going to notice that I'm reading stuff because I don't want to miss anything. Uh, because she has a lot going on, okay? <laughs> and I want to make sure that I mention just about everything. I can't cover everything tonight. But I want to welcome, welcome you to this presentation. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, First Time Home Buying 101. And you're joining Combat Boots to Red Bottoms presentation. I am Letitia Holmes. I'm the founder of Combat Boots to Red Bottoms. Um, and, but I'm, I'm like the queen of England. I don't have any real power. Just the members and stuff have the power. All the ladies that I serve does. So I'm just like a figurehead, right? <laughs> so anyway, we want to welcome, um, just for housekeeping, uh, you can find Combat Boots to Red Bottoms at www.combatboots, the number two, redbottoms.com, not T-O. Make sure you have the number two in there. So again, it's www.combatboots2redbottoms.com. And if you are joining the live, I think you can see the chat and I have added that link. I've also added Deborah Marshall's real estate link also. So you'll be able to easily contact her and get connected with her. Um, today, I want to give a shout out to our online shop. I know a lot of people ask me, what? Okay, you don't have a Combat Boots to Red Bottom shirt on. I do have one of our shirts on. You can actually grab this shirt out of our, um, our shop. We have a few of them left, and it has a little leopard print on the back that you can't see, but all you have to do is go to our online shop to grab that. And um, also to see our directory of the ladies that are in our community, some of the ladies who have businesses, as well as connect with our preferred partner, partners like Ms. Marshall and Outback Steakhouse and, and other uh, businesses that have partnered with Combat Boots to Red Bottoms to provide support to our ladies. All right, so I got the, some of the housekeeping uh, done. Uh, another thing is you can feel free to ask questions. Uh, um, and if you do not feel comfortable asking a question, you can always type it in the chat and I'll make sure that it get answered. If there's anything that we cannot answer today, we will definitely get that message to you. We will get an answer for you and we'll send that out to you. Um, for those who are attending this briefing, you will also get handouts. You will get a copy of what you see today uh, sent to you via email. So if you do not receive that, please let me know by going to, by sending us a message by going to our website, www.combatboots2redbottoms.com. All right. So without further ado, I want to introduce to you, I'm so excited, <laughs> Ms. Deborah Marshall. Now, again, I'm going to be reading and everyone that knows me know that's not my style, but I'm going to be making sure that I don't miss anything. So I met Deborah um, when I went to Houston, we both serve on uh, the board of a nonprofit, and I was so impressed with her energy and her love for veterans. And I watched her for a while and I was like, oh my God, if I could just have a fraction of the energy she has, I would be, I would be able to do anything. So I was very impressed with her. And so today she's coming to talk to us about home buying. And you can also ask her questions about being, you know, getting into the real estate, um, being a real estate agent you know, the ups and downs and all that good stuff. So she is a wealth of knowledge. She's a licensed real estate agent in the state of Texas. And she uh, currently serves, now I always mess this up, EXP. How do you really pronounce that? How do you, how you pronounce that, Deborah? EXP Realty? What is that? That's it. That's it. That's it? Okay. There's an acronym for like, something, but it's just EXP. <laughs> I was like, Am I missing something here? Nope. <laughs> so I've all for years, I'm like, 
how do you pronounce that? So I just say EXP. Yep. So, but, um, but she is a realtor with EXP Realty and she is a Houston native um, and she's a seasoned real estate professional, as you already know. And she recognized that these is, this is what I'm really impressed with. There's a couple of things that I'm re- very impressed with her on. And she says that she recognized the value and the trust that her clients place in her and she strives every day to exceed their expectations. I rarely hear a real estate agent talk like Deborah does. I really do. Um, she has a devotion to clients and her success is mostly based on referrals, not ads or anything of that nature, but straight referrals for her. And and she works really hard to earn her clients respect. One of the things about Deborah that I love is that she gives candid advice also. So not just stuff that you want to hear, but even the things that are hard to hear and she's just being honest with you. So if you don't want to know the answer, if you're working with her to find a home, if you don't want to know the answer, Don't ask the question, okay? Because she's going to be honest with you. And if you're military, we like that, all right? All right, and so um, she's a proud daughter of a Vietnam Army veteran. Go Army, right? (laughs) For a Vietnam Army vet, and she's very active in the veteran community. I've noticed that about her. She's always doing things with veterans. And she, her, she has a special place in her heart for the, our World War II heroes. She really works with them. Um, she is actually on the board, the executive board of a veteran service of, of several veteran service organizations and has recently been appointed, check this out, to the Armed Forces Appreciation Committee with the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. This is a very coveted position is highly coveted so congratulations to you Deborah for snagging that <laughs> snagging that uh, position there of, to be on that committee I think that's great she has also stated now these are her words she has stated that she is blessed to have uh, to be able to uh, to have created an organic connection between her real estate life and her community service. If you haven't seen Deborah, watch her. You need to put her on your scope because she's always working in the community as well as with veterans and active duty military. In fact, she contributes, uh, she donates part of her commission that when she closes on, um, buy, uh, helping veteran, I mean, veterans and active duty military with buying and selling their homes. She actually donates a portion of her commission to veteran service art organizations to continue their mission with helping, you know, our first responders as well as the military community. So I'm going to tell you, Deborah, thank you so much. You deserve a a lot of happiness because I know that that is a labor of love. I know you're doing a lot of this voluntary stuff, but this is a labor of love for you, isn't it? It is. It really is. I want to invite you later on to do a one-on-one interview because I think that is very important for people. I know we're dealing with just first-time home buying here, but I think it's very important for you to, you people to know your story and know um about you and what you do and get to know you on a more intimate level would you be willing to come back absolutely okay great (laughs) so I know you guys are tired of me (laughs) and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in the background I'm going to share the screen that we have um and so Deborah can get started you will also remember you guys are going to get a a copy of this handout I'm tongue-tied today I'm so tired (laughs) So I'm sorry for all of the, I know I'm going a a hundred miles per hour. So I I do apologize for that, but I haven't had any coffee. That's just my personality. (laughs) So anyway, (laughs) all right, Deborah, I'm going to hand it over to you and let me make sure the screen is shared. 
You guys give me a thumbs up if you guys can see it once I share it and you should be able to see it now. All right. So, okay, it's all in your hands, Deborah. I'm going to get out of here. Let me see if I can close my video so you won't, I won't be distracting you. Okay. Thank you so much. I, uh, I'm really honored to be here. Thank you, ladies, for getting on the call. Um, so, uh, um, as you, she stated, my name is Deborah Marshall. Um, I am with EXP Realty. I've been a real estate agent for about a little over seven years now. So um, yeah, that's a real estate is definitely a roller coaster uh, occupation. But I'm happy to always happy to share uh, my journey with others that are interested in in becoming a, a realtor. So please feel free to ask any questions related to that as well. But um, again, happy to be here and just. I, I wanted to create this um, this 10 step process basically to give people an idea of what they're looking for when what they're going to be um, dealing with when they buy their first home Because a lot of people they just don't know you know I have I, that's the whole part of being a first time home buyer what what what's the process what do you do and so I just created this 10 step um, program here to kind of give you the, the building blocks for that. So, um, you know, the first step, I always tell people they come to me, they've already been driving around the neighborhood looking at houses or, or some property and then they call me and said, okay, that's great, but have you spoken to a lender and gotten pre-approved? Do you know what, what your price point is right now? And no, we haven't done that. So I always refer them either to maybe some mortgage companies that I have personally worked with. I always like to give out referrals and I always encourage people to um, go online, do your own research, uh, you know, whatever fits your needs the best, uh, go with them. You know, who has the better interest rate, who, who's working with you, responding to you the best, that's who you go with. But you always have to start off with, with a lender to see where, where, your, where your price point is. There's no sense in looking at a million dollar home when your budget's 250,000, you know? So uh, you, you really gotta start there. Um, <clears throat> so once you start there, that's when you come to me and, and we, we get the, the fun star, stuff started We're looking at the houses. So, um, do y'all want to ask questions as we go along or do y'all want to wait till the end? So I don't want to, if you have questions on any of these bullet points, I'd like to answer them if, if you have them along the way. I'll write mine down, Deborah, and if I've got questions. I'll ask them at the end. Okay. All right. So I, did, I just didn't want to keep rushing. If So if anybody has questions, feel free to uh, raise your hand and uh, uh, or, or put it in the chat and we'll answer them as we go along. So <clears throat> once you get to that process of, of having your pre-approval, you come to me and then we're, we we we'll have a, a, a sit down about what's important to you. What's what, what are the details that, that matter to you, to your family? You know, is it a particular neighborhood? Is it schools? You know, I, I deal, um, you know, with the veteran community, as she mentioned, um, you know, they're relocating. I, I get, you know, veterans and active duty, they come from New Hampshire, they've come from California, Wyoming. They don't know anything about the area here. So I'm their eyes and their ears here. So I, I like to sit down with them and find out what's important to them. Um, the schools, do they have children and whatnot? So we get that criteria together and I start doing the search of currently active homes that again are within their budget. And um, <clears throat> I wanna circle back real quick to the mortgage part of this with the lender because I just experienced this um, with one of my clients, um, school teacher, first time home buyer. And whatever the lender tells you their maximum that they are approving you at does not mean that's what you have to go out and buy. You need to really sit down with your lender and talk to them about what you're comfortable with payment wise. And your realtor is not the one that's going to tell you that your lender is, they know all your finances. So it's really important for you and your lender to say, to sit down and figure out monthly what you're comfortable with. 
even though you can, you can afford 300,000, you may be more comfortable with the $200,000 payment. You need to make sure that your lender understands that. So when you come to me, we know what we're looking for. You know, you know, God bless this, this man. He did not realize until we started getting under contract, he started looking at numbers and he got overwhelmed. He got overwhelmed. He backed out of the contract twice, <laughs> two different homes. And, you know, that's cold feet. I deal with that with first time home buyers, but I never had anybody back out twice in a row and especially in this market. And I explained to him, I said, you know, you really need to have that conversation with the lender on what's comfortable for you. Because lenders want to give, get you to get a loan as much as they can get you a loan for. But um, so just that's really important uh, what's comfortable to you. So when you come to me, we, we're, uh, we're in that price point uh, on the searches of what, what you're going to be comfortable with. So um, we're, you know, when we get to that point, we're looking at the homes. We're going around and checking out the different neighborhoods. And you find... Hey, oh my gosh, we finally found the, the dream home. You know, here we're on to step three here, the dream home. You know, this is the one I want. So the, the process after that is, you know, I start looking at the, the history on that home. They, there's a seller's disclosure that's attached to each property. I go over all the paperwork that the agent has provided. So I know the history of this home. So when I run comparables, to see if the list price that they have it down for is a fair price. And then I come to you and say, okay, this is, this is what the average sales price in the neighborhood is. And this is, this is the condition of the home based on what they provided. What are you comfortable with you know, offering on this home? Excuse me. So when we come to an agreement and we, um, we're ready to make an offer, I type that offer up. You, you review it, you sign off on it, and if it's accepted <laughs> in this market, if it's accepted, um, you know, then what we do is um, you're under contract at that point. When the buyer and the seller both sign, it is officially executed. So there are steps after that. Um, you have to understand also that there's a good $3,000 up front, right at the gate that you're gonna to have to have cash because there's something called earnest money. Um, that's your good faith money showing that you're, you're gonna buy this house. That's typically 1% of the sales price of the home. So if it's 100,000, the earnest money's $1,000. That goes to title. Title company is the middle person in the transaction between the buyer and the seller. They handle all the legalities of you know, uh, transferring uh, ownership from the seller to the buyer. So they're, they're a very important person, um, you know, entity in the process at this point is the title company. So you get earnest money to the title company. There's also an option period. A lot of people don't know what option period is. And maybe not all states have it. I know Texas does, because that's where I do business. Option period is the period of time from the time the contract is executed for you to review um, that home with an inspection and decide based on what you find out, if you wanna move forward with this offer, with this contract. Um, hey, you know, there's some roof damage the inspector found. Do I really wanna move forward? Are we gonna negotiate now? So that option period is typically, on average has been about 10 days. You do pay about $100 for that 10 days to have the option to back out. For any reason, during that time, you can back out of that contract. Just because the, the sky was cloudy that day, you can back out, but you have to do it within that time frame. You do lose the option period, but it's worth it if, if you cannot come to terms with the seller or you just, hey, you found another property that wasn't on the market last week and it is now, and you really like that one better than the one you're under contract with. You're, you're out the option money, but you can legally back out and cancel that contract and move on to something else. So option pair is very important in the process of buying a home. So you've got your money to title company. You're under contract, under official contract now. You're past the option period of whatever you, know, you, you agreed to. 
the next step um, after you know the home is inspected, the next step after you're op past that option period, the home gets appraised. You want to make sure that you know um, your lender is is making sure that what they're offering the loan at the home is actually worth it. If they come in and do an appraisal and it's a two hundred thousand, you you agreed to buy this home for two hundred thousand, and the appraisal comes in at one eighty, then if you if the if the seller is not willing to lower the price, then you have the option to back out of that because it didn't appraise. So um, the appraisal part is very important, and it's typically a clause in the contract. Um, it's called a third party financing addendum that protects you, where if the home does not appraise for the agreed upon sales price, you can back out of that contract and you still get your earnest money back because it didn't appraise and you couldn't come to terms with the seller on them uh, lowering that price. So nowadays in this market, it's very difficult to get the seller to do that. Now they are actually having you sign an appraisal waiver where you waive your right to back out of that and you're actually willing to pay the difference of the gap of the appraisal. So $200,000 home comes in at 180, your lender saying, I'm only, we're only giving you 180 because that's what it appraised for. You have a $10,000 gap. Now you have, if you sign that waiver, you're liable for that $10,000 gap out of your pocket. And a lot of sellers are, requiring this in order to accept your offer. So I look at all that stuff up front to make sure what we're walking into. So I know all our exit plans if required at this point. So it's very important that, you know, the, the real, realtor that you're working with is experienced in the market that we are in today. So that's very, very important. So once we're past the appraisal part, then we go to closing and closing can take on average about 30 days. I have had some that take quite a bit longer and those are usually um, when there's land involved. If there's say a mo mobile home uh, on that property, um, just had that, you know, this not this about a year ago, um, I had a, a veteran relocate here from Wyoming and he came here for the land and they had a mobile home on it and it just uh, was not up to standard, um, to today's standard. So there was a lot of uh, multiple inspections that, was, that had to be done to that. And there was a well and a septic and there's a lot more involved in certain types of property. So you wanna make sure that the agent you're working with um, is experienced in those types of transactions. So uh, if that is something that you're looking for, make sure that the agent that you choose that you have a consultation with, you let them know up front that this is what I'm looking for. Do you have experience working with these types of transactions? Because you don't want somebody that's completely uh, unaware of what they're working with, uh, with stuff like that. So, so anyway, um, sorry, I know we're, we're supposed to be scrolling and I got, I got behind on all of it too. <laughs> so I'm just going off the checklist. So, um, like I said, um, we, we mentioned you're, you guys are going to get uh, this email to you as well. Um, so you, you can refer back to it. If you have questions on it, you can always refer back to it. Uh, you know, VA loans, obviously, uh, that, that's a very important um, benefit for our veterans to be able to use that to purchase their dream home. Um, I know that Janet mentioned uh, she was interested in possibly uh, building a custom home on her property. Um, there are VA construction loans for that. Um, I'm not sure if different states have different um, um, rules on, on the VA construction loans. They do work a little bit differently than the VA loan, Janet. So I would definitely get, um, you know, I, I'm not necessarily uh, versed in all the VA construction loans um, information, but I can get... Uh, the lender that I work with to kind of give me a little bit more information on the breakdown on what you're going to be looking for. I, I knew, do know that they they typically you have to uh, get this approved. You have to have an approved builder through the VA. So uh, it's a little bit more strict when you're dealing with the VA construction loan. But um, was there a particular question that you had, Janet, on that 
I know you mentioned it before we got on the call uh, officially, but uh, did you want to discuss that now? She might, she might have stepped away. Okay, well, Janet, if you come back on and you, you have a particular question you wanted to, to get on that. I think um, she's on, on mute. Janet, are you there? Okay, I see it. She is on mute. Once she comes off, I'll send her a message. Yeah. About that, yeah. and I am going to. I'm putting in a link for the VA home loans. Uh, I, well, I actually put in a link for VA home loans. Mm -hmm. Um, and this one that I am going to put in here is on construction and valuation. Yes, and it is coming. Is that the right? Yes. One? Okay. And it is coming from our benefits uh, page for the VA. So if you're looking for uh, construction to build a home, uh, then I, I should know this because I built one. I just <laughs> let my realtor take care of everything. She, all I did was walk in and sign the paperwork. She didn't even change my cabinets. Oh my. To the way she literally, I was deployed when I built uh, my home in North Carolina. And when she, I told her exactly what I wanted. And so I settled for cabinets because they couldn't, the builder didn't have exactly what I wanted. She walked uh -huh. into another home that she was showing uh -huh. and she was like, those are Tisha's cabinets. And the guy was like, that was, you know, there he was like, no, those are Miss, I think it was Miss Jones. This is Miss Jones house. She was like, but those are the cabinets that my client wants. <laughs> so <laughs> he went and made it happen and didn't tell me, which is very risky. I know that's very risky, but when I walked in the home, mm. my cabinets were there and I was very, very happy. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, there there are um, you know different um, criteria because like the VA loan, you you get approved for the full amount up front. With the VA construction loan, I believe it's in in parcel to the progress of the building of the home. So um, we'd have to get a little bit more information to her on her specific questions on the construction part of it. So yeah, and that's another thing, the certificate of eligibility for a VA loan. A lot of veterans don't know that they need that. They need that, the lender's gonna need that to make sure that you are eligible to apply for your VA benefit, your VA loan benefits. You know, I was dealing with a veteran that relocated here recently and she had some lender give her an approval for a VA loan, I don't know how they did it because you you it is required to have the COE in order to get your VA loan. So uh, it, it takes I know it takes some time to get um, to get that that over to your lender. So if if you're planning to buy a home, sorry, can you dual military? I can't read all the chat. We just had a question come in. It says, can dual military use VA loan, um, one VA loan, I mean, a VA loan at the same time? So both of them are serving active duty and they want to, uh, both of them have the VA loan. Can they use them all on one house? Is Am I understanding mm -hmm. that question correctly, Nikita? She's my superstar. <laughs> two houses. Okay. Can they, can they build two houses since they're dual military and they have um, the VA loan? You should be able to. Um, it just depends on, you know, the pricing of the, of the home, as long as it, it's within the budget of what the VA loan uh, that you're approved for, the amount that, that you're approved for. Um, you can only... The, the only thing is you can only homestead one of them. You know, only one of them can you, be your primary residence. The other one would be considered um, as an investment 
uh, income producing property. Um, so what that means is you don't get the full tax benefits if it's not homesteaded. Uh, like the state of, or in our county, some counties may be different, but our county, Harris County is a 20% discount if, um, if you're homesteaded. And if, if, uh, if a veteran is already 100% disabled uh, rating, they don't pay taxes. They don't pay the property taxes. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, you can afford more house, but you don't have to worry about all some of these subdivisions, very hefty price tag on the taxes. So, um, but to active duty, you should be able to do the two homes as long as, like I said, it's within the, the price point of what the VA loan amount is. You can only homestead one, but the other one won't be occupied. What's it by? <clears throat> yeah, so that's, uh, are you going to be uh, renting it out? The other, the second home? Okay, so yeah, it would just be an income, income producing property, which you just, you'd be on the hook for the full taxes on that. Um, so it's, as long as, you know, it's, as long as you're aware of that, that won't be your homestead. So you'll you'll be responsible for the full full percent of the taxes on it, on the on the income producing property. Okay. To any other questions, or you want to keep scrolling on this one, Patricia? I've I've just um, put a link to USAA. USAA does a lot of home loans yes. with um, military. Mm -hmm. And so they have a really good VA home loan information page that talks about the facts of, of VA loans and the eligibility when it comes to funding. Yeah. I'm not endorsing, Combat Boots and Red Bottoms is not endorsing or saying to go with USAA, but the information that we have found there is really, really good yeah. uh, and, and, and rather detailed. So they have really good question and answers mm -hmm. when it comes to that. Like, um, will I have to pay for private uh, PMI, private mortgage insurance? They address the refinancing of a VA loan, if you can do that and what the rules are. Um, and do you need money with a, a VA loan? Are there rules regarding co-borrowers and things of that nature? You know, what is a VA funding fee. So they have a lot of really good questions, um, question answer format on there. So that's a great resource for you ladies. And I have put the link there along with the link for um, the construction and valuation for home and, and the VA home loan, which I spelled wrong. My last name is home. So I always put that L in there. It messes me <laughs> up all the time, but the links are correct. And so we're going to keep strolling. So um, back again, also just making sure that the real estate agent that you uh, are referred to or you seek out that is licensed, make sure they're licensed in your state. Uh, you, they're supposed to be licensed in, in the state that they're working in. So make sure that that's, that's the case when um, you interview a, a realtor and Make sure that you're you're working with one, especially if you're a first time home buyer. That's going to be answering your questions. Going to be patient, um, answers your calls, answers your messages. Uh, I deal with first time home buyers a lot because I have, um, you know, I understand it's it's a scary process buying your first home, and I I really enjoy uh, walking the path with them as at their pace. I answer all their questions. There's never a, a you know a wrong question, and uh, make sure that the realtor that you pick is going to be patient and answer all, all all the questions that you have. So, <clears throat> so this is just kind of more of the breakdown of the beginning of the bullet points that I kind of just out the gate started talking about the making the offer, the the role of the title company in this process. You're, you know, at some point you're going to hear title, title, title a lot. So, and the role of the earnest money and, and what that means. 
in the, your option period now that you you have a little bit of knowledge on on the money up front that you will need because um you know when you get your home inspected as well once you're past you you, you get your uh offer accepting you're under contract you have to pay to have it inspected depending on the size of the home in the area is on average probably about four or five hundred dollars a bigger home may be more you know and if you get you know all kinds of extra stuff thrown in there because all these inspection companies want to have all kinds of bells and whistles uh packages that they'll they'll offer you so you just need the home inspected um that's the, the important part so um just know that you will have to pay for the inspection uh up front deborah can i ask you a question about the inspection uh uh, experience that you're that a lot of first time home buyers, I know that can be an intimidating process because as military, we move from place to place to place. And a lot of times we're renting instead of buying. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't have to worry about basic homeowner stuff. So right. one of the questions that I, I have is when as a first time home buyer or just any home buyer that's getting a, a an inspection, what are some key things that will probably be deal breakers when it comes to purchasing a home or key things that you should definitely look out for? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Great question, because um, it is overwhelming when that inspection report comes back. And I will say also to um, get an inspection, inspection, inspection company, well, I'm getting tied up, um, that is going to come out fairly quick, because when you're in that option period, you want to get that inspection done quickly. You want that report back quickly. So you have time to digest what's in it. You have time to talk to your realtor and decide what are we going to do here? We're really concerned about this stuff. So you, the, the quicker the inspection company can come out and provide that report is uh, very key. Around here, they'll come out the same day next or the next day at the latest. So make sure you have somebody that's going to come out uh, right away. Um, so when you get that report back, it's it can be overwhelming because inspection companies will list everything on there and you're looking at this report going oh my god they need to fix everything especially if it's an older home and it's not brand new um the key things that i look for is foundation these are the big money tickets foundation the roof um <clears throat> hvac <laughs> especially right now it's about to get really hot here you know uh, summertime coming along in the southern states that we need our ac right so make sure that that air conditioning is working good if you're up in the northern states make sure that the heater is working good so you want a good hvac system you want a good uh roof and you want good foundation and you know plumbing can be another big ticket item in the wiring um with the older homes um i see a, that gets ticked off a lot as a concern by uh, first-time home buyers um, you will find that the older homes are not up to code right now. So these inspectors are going to come in saying, well, this is not up to code. This is not up to code. As long as there's not a hazard on some of this stuff, it's not really the big concern if, if there's issues with the big ticket items that I mentioned. So those are the ones that I make sure that we are good on because those are the deal breakers. If it's got foundation, you're, you're looking 10 15 grand to get the foundation fixed you know the roof could be a lot of money um so that those are those are big ticket items and and fencing right now that's that could cost you a good four or five grand to get a fence done depending on the size of the yard so those are the big ticket items that are that i worry about and that i really try and get my buyers to focus on um try not to focus so much on cosmetic things that you could probably probably patch up VA loans are very strict on things. So um, I try to make sure that when we are going out looking at homes, I walk the property with you, obviously. So I'm looking for those cracks before we even make an, an offer. If you're considering that home, I'm checking the water. I'm looking under the sink, whether it's a new home, a uh, new build or not, because I've had that issue uh, on final walkthrough on a brand new home, you think everything's all good. And I've opened that bathroom cabinet in, in the upstairs bathroom and water had been leaking. I don't know how long because somebody didn't hook up the pipes underneath the, and the sink properly. 
and the whole floor, uh, bottom floor of that cabinet was just rotted out. So, and this is the wow. day before closing on a brand new house. So um, you, you got to look at all the little things. And I do that when I walk the property with, with my clients ahead of time, because I really try to help guide them to look at the things that, that we're, we're seeing on some of these properties. So when we get to that inspection point, I, I feel more confident. They'll feel more confident than, hey, you know, we, we picked a home that looks like it has very minimal issues that will pass a VA, in, VA inspection. So that's another part of, of what, you know, the role I play in, in helping the buyers. Great. It's funny that you brought up um, homes that sometimes they're not up to code, especially the older homes. Um, I bought a house for my parents. And I remember when I was stationed at Fort Bragg, I got a phone call about the water heater. And so I, I have always had a uh, home warranty on my parents' house. And so this is this, I think this is probably one of the first major things that we had besides the roof and the roof was because of a tornado. So it was covered by the homeowner's insurance. Now, when I got the, when the guy started talking about the bill for the water heater, I'm like, what, <laughs> you know, that's yeah. how much, the, you know, he was like, well, we have to bring it up to code. Yeah. So if something breaks, one of the things that, you know, being a, uh, when I bought this house, it was my first home I bought. Um, and I didn't, you know, I didn't pick it. My parents picked it, you know, it was like, this is the house we want. So I was like, okay, I'll pay for it. Not knowing, Hey, you know, if the stuff, and I got a, a binder, not a binder that's exaggerating. I, the, the inspection list was pretty detailed. It feels and like so, a binder. <laughs> yeah. It felt like a binder, but one of the things I looked at is these are the things that I know that I may have to fix. So, you know, and I start checking the list and see what, what's a deal breaker or what isn't. Yeah. Um, when I did the water heater, I didn't even think about, you know, bringing it up to code. So now anything that needs to be fixed or possibly could be need to be fixed, I always look at it may not be up to code because it's a much older house and I'm going to have to spend more money in order to bring it up to code. Yes. Um, and he said that that's not, covered by the warranty and I was shocked by that mm. so it's funny that you you brought that up um I know in some states especially like Mississippi all the houses have foundation issues because it's on that red clay yeah. um, so um yeah. that one's a real a little bit hard to maneuver around when you're buying older homes in um those particular states that have that that type of soil um but, um, oh, it was one other thing, inspection. We were talking about inspect home inspections. What is the, do they do home, do they do inspections when, um, what kind of, what do we expect? What should a first time home buyer expect when they are buying land when it comes to an inspection? Do they um, do a, 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 a thorough inspection of the land? I think that's pretty tricky, isn't it? It is. I mean, they you you need to make sure you have your survey so you know, you know, that's a big thing when you're buying land. Where where are your, your boundaries on your land? You know, I mean you and I spoke about this recently. Mm -hmm. So make sure that the you have a survey. If you don't have a survey, you're gonna have to pay for a survey um, to get if if you're buying land. Um, if there is there a well on it, is there a septic system? That's the kind of stuff that gets inspected, not necessarily the land itself, but what is on the land, if anything. That's where what's going to be inspected. Okay. When you are, when you have land and you're getting ready to build, if you decide to build on it or move a mobile home on it, is there anything that jumps out to you as a realtor? that you need to be aware of when buying land and you're going to say, Hey, I'm going to build on this, or I'm going to move my mobile home onto this. Um, well, I just, like I mentioned, a, a buyer of mine that bought some, a, a, he bought five acres out North of Houston and it had a mobile home on it. It was, it's a temporary living arrangement because they plan to build a big house. 
uh, on that land. But the mobile home, I did not realize because, you know, it's not something I would normally find out, but it wasn't anchored properly to today's standard. Wow. Um, so that was a big, big deal. We had to hire an inspection company to come out and inspect just the stability of the mobile home. Then we have to get a quote on how much it's going to cost to do that. Then actually have somebody come out and do that. I was actually crawling up underneath that mobile home <laughs> part of the way. <laughs> but once I started seeing the spiders, I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm by myself in the country <laughs> and I'm crawling up underneath this mobile home because my client is in Wyoming. He can't physically be there to for for himself to go up underneath there, and he needs to. He he's talking to people, you know, uh, inspection company, and they're telling him, well, it's this and that. And so my client's like, can you get up underneath there and take pictures? And of course, I just want to do whatever I can to help my client. So I was like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> and so I started seeing spider webs there. I said, like, okay, okay, I got, I can't do this now. <laughs> but yeah, it's it when you have. Uh, a structure like a mobile home it's uh there's there's a, especially if you're near a place where there's hurricanes on the coastline they have to be anchored down properly and that had to and and, and he like i said he was a veteran he had a va loan so it was important that it passed that VA inspection so that one took a little bit longer to get all that stuff uh inspected and completed so uh, it can be done but those are things that that I look for now that I've learned from that process because I they're all learning experiences for me <laughs> okay and I know that we're um we're quickly coming to our one hour mark I got another question okay. um now this question was asked uh by someone who could not be here okay and um it is as a seller um when you're buying a home does the seller have, are they required to disclose if someone died in the home and how they died? Such as if there, there was a, a murder or something of that nature. Only if something in the home caused the death is when they are supposed to disclose that. Oh, okay. That's, that's good to know. Yes. So the only time a home buy a home sell, a seller is obligated to um, disclose if someone died in the home is if something in the home uh, caused a death. Is yes. is that kind of like mold? Yeah, mold okay. or you know, what if there's a hole in the ceiling and they fell through and died or something? Okay, you know, stuff like that. Interesting. Okay. I'm glad they asked that question. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and another quick one on inspection, even if you're buying a new build, um, it's just because the builder gives you the warranty and you may think, oh, it's a brand new home. I don't need it. I always recommend, always, always recommend that the buyers, even if it's a new home, get, get it inspected for peace of mind. And for that to be on record, if anything happened in the future, you had it inspected. Because like I said, I've, I've walked property in, in the building process and um, the ceiling was leaking on one of them. We walked in with, with my buyer and her parents to, hey, we're gonna go take a look, see how the progress is going on the new build. And we walk in, it's a rainy day and there's water pouring from the ceiling. Oh, wow. All over the floor. And I'm like trying to get a hold of the sales agent that's on property and let her know. And she comes over or she calls and says, well, we'll have maintenance look at it on Monday. This is Saturday. And I said, no, ma'am, either you go find a bucket to catch the water that continues to fall on this floor, or I will go buy one and get it. So please make sure that you have the home inspected, even if it's a new build, and always walk your property, whether it's new or a resale home, when it's raining, because the rain hides things that otherwise would be hidden, you know? Right. I've, I've, I've had that happen many times. So, so the Sorry. best time to go shopping for a home is, you know, while on a rainy day. Yes. All right. <laughs> yes. It is. It is. I've, I've found things it, during the rain that you know, you won't find it on a nice sunny day. So <laughs> you mentioned the 10 day option period. 
Yes. You said that you automatically pay $100 for having that option. Is that, did I understand that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So if, and you also talked about the appraisal, um, yes. the, the appraisal is if it does not, if the appraisal doesn't come out right, you can back out. Now, do you, without any penalty, and you won't lose your earnest money, correct? Right, right. Okay, so does that also mean that it has to be within that 10-day period or it does not have to be? No, because that is on a separate form called a third-party financing. So there's okay. different, different um, I guess, backup for you in that third-party financing. It, you, you make sure that you and your agent have reviewed that where it checks off that this home must appraise at the agreed upon price. And there's a certain amount of days that allows you to get that appraisal in to make sure that you can back out because it's typically about 21 days. Sellers okay. like to shorten that, but the longer, the better for the buyer um, and the lender. So, and the lender is the one that orders the appraisal. Um, we have no, no part in any of that. The, your lender um, chooses the appraiser that comes out and they're all different. One appraiser can say one thing and the other one say another thing, but you know, our hands are tied as far as the appraisals go. So, um, and, and that is an, a, another fee that's part of uh, the whole home buying process, about $500, I think for an appraisal. Okay. So what about this 10 day option period? Do you, if you back out during that 10 days, do you lose your earnest money? No. Okay. All right. Yes. I, I, I wanted to make sure option. I didn't miss that. Yes. It, it, you only lose the option period money and it can vary from five to 10 days on option period. Um, every seller is different on what they will allow. Obviously as a buyer's agent, I like to get as much time as possible. The seller wants as little as time as possible to move on to the next step, get past the option option period because once you pass that then you risk losing earnest money so you're really in it then so getting past that option period time is really important because you've gotten past all the inspection and negotiate extra negotiating during that time okay all right great and that's typically another time that i try and negotiate more money off the the, the price during inspection especially if it's minor cosmetic stuff and the seller doesn't want to mess with fixing it, they'll give a little bit more on the price. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Do we have any questions so far before we close out? Okay. If you see on your screen, you can see Deborah's contact information. She is a Combat Boots to Red Bottoms preferred partner. So you can contact her at any time, um, not in the middle of the night. <laughs> so she does have a family. But before I let you go, Deborah, I have one other question for you. Okay. Actually, two. Okay. What is, can you tell us or share with us the most challenging, um, the most challenging experience you've had as a real estate agent? Oh boy. Um, probably, I think two years now I had, um, I had a family first time home buyers and they were, um, applying for, you know, down payment assistance. And then there was an additional program through the city called lift where they get additional funds to help them buy the house. And, you know, they went through, through three lenders. The first one approved them at like 80,000 and they were just so distraught. There's like, we're never going to get a house. And I said, please don't give up, keep reaching out, try these lenders. And eventually they wound up getting like a $220,000 approval. And so like, see, you know, you just don't give up. But once we started the process, it just kept getting extended because of the, the, the lift program for the additional funds. It just, it was a nightmare. It went from 30 days to 60 days to 90 days to try and close this family. So it just, it was a never ending um, approval process because it was so much government red tape. I've never experienced anything. It, I came away from that thinking I will never do another program again if I get a buyer that approves <laughs> this. It just really tested my patience. But then I thought, you know, 
to hand them the keys to their home. And if that was part of the process for them to get to that point, it was worth it. So it was difficult, but so worth it. Oh, and you know what? That brings me to a conversation that you and I had briefly. Um, you were mentioning that a lot of people who are, you know, kind of wary about their credit are going in. They want to be home buyers and they're, you know, they're torn between repairing their credit and buying a home. And you mentioned to me that there are programs out there that helps with credit repair for home buyers that do not charge you. I know the big thing is charging for credit repair. Can you, yeah. can you briefly just talk about yeah. that a little bit? A lot of lenders will do that for you for free. They will help they will look at your credit and they will tell you where the difficulty is and how to fix it. And they do it for free. Wow. So yes, check with the lender first, have them look, let them know, Hey, I'm looking to buy a house. Can you please look at my credit? Let me know where I'm at and what steps I need to take to get to where I need to be to get that credit score up. So I can get a low, lower enough interest rate and get into a home. That's good to know. I did not know that until you mentioned that. And my last and final question is what, share with us the most, as of today, the most rewarding experience uh, you have had being a real estate agent. You're going to make me cry now. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good friend of mine. Uh, we serve on a veteran service organization together called Serve. He's an army veteran. And, um, you know, we, we'd kid around and talk, talk about stuff whenever we're at the meetings. And then he asked me out to lunch one time. He said, I really want to buy a house. I said, okay, well, let's, let's talk about that. So we did. And he got his, uh, approval and we went and, uh, looked at some homes and, and he, the day we were signing the contract for him to buy his house, it was a new build. I didn't realize until he told me, he said, you know, um, five years ago, I was homeless. Wow. And today I'm signing the paperwork to buy my first home. Um, he struggled with alcohol and drug addiction and he was homeless. And I did not know that about him. So he, he actually teaches uh, a peer, he's a peer support in, in the company that he works for, for veterans now, helping them when, with, when they struggle like that, because he, he, he walked that path. So he understands it. But to have played a role in, in the full circle for him, it was very humbling for me. So um, another thing that I do is I present uh, my veteran clients active duty with a custom flag that I pay for out of my pocket. That's my closing gift to them. And his flag had a, a whole story on the back of it that was engraved. <laughs> Wow. And my friend that does the flags, he said, never again, are we doing one that long? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad it was for him that the, the only really long one that was ever done was for him because uh, his story is just amazing. And that's why I keep doing what I do. That is an awesome story. So I am going to, wow. So everyone, if you have any questions about, um, buying a home and I'm going to show you my, my face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here I am. Um, please contact Deborah and she is, you know, like she mentioned, the real estate agent needs to be licensed in your area, in your state, but she is here to help. She will, if she has any contacts, she will share them with you that can help you. She will also give you whatever advice you need to get started. Um, I have, for one, have contacted her and had questions myself. Um, so, you know, even though I've built a home as well as purchased an older home. So she is she loves combat boots to red bottoms. She loved the ladies and combat boots to red bottoms. And she just has a heart for our military personnel and our first responders. And so I can't say enough good things about Deborah. So I'm very honored that she has chosen to be a combat boots to red bottoms preferred partner. So please utilize her when you have questions. You can locate her. I've put her link 
in the chat box. Cynthia says she would love to connect with you. Um, okay. I put her link in the chat box and you can also find her on our Combat Boots to Red Bottoms um, page under our preferred partners. And all you have to do is go to Combat Boots to Red Bottoms and I will put the link in here um, to go straight to the partner site. And you can find her beautiful face sitting right there as you pull it up and just, you can connect with her directly. Uh, let me stop sharing this screen. Yeah, okay. and you know, as you mentioned, yeah, you know, because I'm part of EXP we're, we're worldwide, you know, I had um, my niece reach out to me recently. She lives in Wisconsin, ready to buy her first house. And she's like, well, obviously I'm not licensed there, but I have a team member that is. So I reached oh, out to that team member and now we're all working together to, you know, they help build up her credit and she's approved to buy her first home now. So now she's in that process and, you know, it, it doesn't matter what stage you're in. I'm sure we have a contact somewhere. So. Awesome. Deborah, you are awesome. awesome. Janet says, <laughs> Deborah, you are awesome. Thank you for your information. Slow salute to you. Nikita, oh, thank, thank you. you um who are sisters for life yes 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 <laughs> janet i want you to come into combat boots red bottoms um our facebook group i will send you the link and i'm also going to send all you ladies a copy of these slides and it has deborah's information directly on it also so you will have that um it was something else i was going to tell you guys. oh janet i also if you look in the chat I put some information about the VA construction and valuation, the VA home loan construction and valuation, because I know that you were asking about that and Deborah was uh, addressing that. So scroll up and click on that link and it has some good information on there. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact her directly or you can also fill out the contact us form at Combat Boots to Red Bottoms, and we will make sure that she gets the message. Cool. <laughs> thank you, right. ladies. So thank Enjoy. you for joining us, ladies. I am going to close out tonight. Um, again, for those of you who are watching the replay, uh, please contact her. All her contact information is on the screen, as well as you can visit her, uh, find her at combatboots2redbottoms.com. Thank you. I'll see you guys later. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>